jump right into it. Hey, Adam. Hey, Adrian. How's it going? Great. How are you? Doing really well. Nine Doing days really away well. from the election. I can't believe it's finally here. I know. I know. It's, it's just over a week, and uh, so many exciting things are happening. How are you feeling about it? You know, I'm feeling cautiously optimistic. Um, I worked on Hillary Clinton's campaign in 2016, so I've certainly learned to take nothing for granted and to take every, um, you know, everything very, very seriously and not to um, get overly excited until the last person votes and the last poll closes. So I'm going to reserve my, um, my feelings until that actually happens. Uh, but look, you know, we've had record turnout, early turnout across the country, especially in the battleground states. Yeah. Uh, Florida has seen massive, massive early turnout, which is exciting because that's yeah. a state that we need to win. And, and, and our campaign has been working very hard to make sure that our voters know that, you know, as much as it is, it's great to vote on Election Day, we also think it's great to vote early. you got to make a plan. You know, yeah. there's a lot of, um, you know, things that you just need to take into greater consideration this time of the year, you know, because of COVID and because of, you know, just the fact that we do have a lot of people that are voting early. So we encourage our supporters to vote early um, and, uh, you know, to vote absentee or to vote early. And if they choose to wait till Election Day, that's also great, too. Just make sure you vote. Yeah, here in New York, there are such long lines. And for the first time ever, we have early voting here in New York. And the lines were yeah. just blocks and blocks long. It was amazing to see people out waiting in line starting yesterday. That was very, very cool. That's exciting. Have you voted yet? Did you vote yesterday? I have not voted yet. I actually got an absentee ballot because I didn't think I was going to be in New York. But I decided mm -hmm. that I am going to go vote in person early. And I have a plan set. My brothers and I are going together on Friday to go vote at our early polling place, was that, which is actually That's at uh, Madison great. Square Garden, which should be fun. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. I love MSG, yeah. and I can't wait until I can go back there for concerts again. It's going to be fantastic. Yeah. Um, see, I love that you just said my brothers and I are making a plan. We're going to go vote together. I mean, this is what people should do. You know, make mm -hmm. voting fun. Grab a couple friends. Go vote early. Maybe have a Absolutely. cocktail, have a glass of wine afterwards, or maybe just, you know, go hang out, take a walk. Um, but it's fun to do it with your friends. And it's fun to make a plan, you know? I think one of the things that we've really encouraged on this campaign, again, given the fact that people are traveling, you know, you're dealing with a number of different factors that are just, that are just different this time around, um, making sure that you have a plan, that you think it through, that you don't wait until the last minute, um, and again, there's nothing, obviously, like, there's nothing wrong with voting on Election Day, but what if it's pouring down rain? Like, I'm in Washington, D.C. today, yeah. it's pouring down rain outside. I would obviously, if this was Election Day, I would certainly go vote. But knowing myself, I would prefer to stand in a line without rain. I have yeah. no problem standing in a line, but I would prefer to do it without the rain. So, therefore, I would probably, you know, when I can start voting next week, early vote in D.C. starts tomorrow on Monday. I'm going to watch the weather. Um, but I'm probably going to make a plan to vote on Tuesday or Wednesday in between all the work we're doing on the campaign. Um, and I'm not going to wait until the last minute because if I do, then, you know, who knows what the weather's going to be like. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, we get so many questions from fans asking us about the voting process. And over the last couple of weeks, we've seen a lot of court decisions about when votes can be counted and how long after the election they can be counted. So, you know, what is the, the Biden campaign doing to help make sure that all of these votes are actually going to be counted? Well, I'm so glad you asked me that, Adam. I mean, first of all, we have ha we have the most robust voter protection team that you've ever seen on any major presidential campaign, Democrat or Republican this time around. Why? Because we knew that the Trump team and the Republicans were going to pull some shenanigans mm -hmm. and try to continue their efforts to disenfranchise the votes their efforts to try to keep people from exercising their rights at the ballot box. So we were anticipating this, um, yeah. and therefore we came prepared. Um, we are we are we have a team of attorneys ready for anything and everything that could happen. We've already deployed quite a few of them, and we've had some victories. Um, but the bottom line is we are uh, confident that we have the structure in place to make sure that every single vote counts. Um, and we've got poll watchers, you know, for everybody tuning in today, you should go volunteer to be a poll watcher if you still can wherever you are. I mean, it's really important. Um, and especially for the younger people out there, 
You know, this oftentimes has been kind of, you know, working a precinct or, or being a poll watcher, being a poll worker is oftentimes reserved or, or is, is just done by, you know, older people, senior citizens, which is great. But we have to make sure, of course, that we're protecting our most vulnerable citizens this time around who are most vulnerable to COVID. So we're encouraging all the young people out there and even people my age who are middle-aged Americans, <laughs> um, <laughs> that you should volunteer to be a poll watcher and a poll worker because it's so important. And, um, you know, there's just so much at stake this cycle. So the more um, we, you know, the more that we, the people out there that we have making sure that the process is staying intact and that the integrity of the systems are staying in place, you know, the, the better the chances are that um, we're not going to have, you know, some like crazy stuff happening on election day. Yeah. Our, our fans, we, we've talked about this a lot, things that you can do even if you're not old enough to vote, like going to work at the polls, but also signing up to phone bank and to text uh, for your yes. family. You know, it's such a real, it's a really important thing to do. Um, and, you know, even if you're not old enough to vote, there are people in your family who are old enough to vote. And the way you can talk to them about the issues, if you're really informed about it, can help convince others to end up voting for the Biden-Harris ticket. You know, Adam, I'm so glad you mentioned that because we've had a number of young supporters this time around, you know, 15, 16 year olds who can't mm -hmm. vote, who wish they could, yeah. who have family members who can vote, who certainly have parents who are voting and friends. Many of their friends are um, of voting age over the age of 18. And they, Storm Reed, I don't know if you know Storm Reed. She's, mm -hmm. a, she's an influencer, a young influencer, really dynamic young woman. She started this effort to really educate the people in her life who can vote mm -hmm. in a very effective way. And the bottom line is she's showing everybody. And, you know, it's true that even if you can't vote, there's a lot that you can do this time to make a difference. And a lot of that is educating your family and your friends and your network and your own world who can vote um, about the, the Biden-Harris ticket. What's at stake in this election? The contrast between what Joe Biden will do as president versus, you know, the last four years. Um, there's so much at stake and there's so much that young people can do. I mean, you know, there's nothing that inspires me more than some of these, you know, young, young grade school kids who are out there with their parents, you know, knocking on doors, dropping lit um, and just being active, civically active. A lot of my friends, I, I don't have kids myself, but a lot of my friends do. And a lot of them are really activating their kids at a very young age. It's just so important because I think if we learned anything from the 2016 campaign, it's that we can't let others do the work for us, right? We have to do the work ourselves. We have to make sure our families are engaged, our friends are engaged. And it's just so wonderful to see so many young people, especially now with the advent of social media, just getting even right. bigger and having a greater role in our lives. There's so much that younger people can do to really let their voices be heard. It's funny, you just mentioned the contrast between the candidates. And that's mm -hmm. something that, you know, I think about all the time. And the word that comes to mind is civility and that Joe Biden is going to bring America together, both sides, all the different sides of this country in a really civil way and to create discussion. And discussion is so important because you want everybody to end up moving in the same direction, which is, is forward. And I know you, you work with a lot of the surrogates on the campaign mm -hmm. and there are so many different people out there. I mean, I'm a big Andrew Yang fan. He was just on my podcast. Yeah, He's out we there. Love him. Yeah, Elizabeth Warren is amazing doing work. And, you know, yeah. some of our, 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 um, our fans during the primary process voted for Joe and voted for also different candidates. But Joe has done such an amazing job to bring all of these candidates and their ideas together. And he's created this, this plan to move the country forward. And it's so inspiring to see that. I'm so glad you mentioned that, Adam, because it has been truly it just it's just so uplifting to see all of these yeah. candidates who were rivals in the primary. You know, yeah. we saw it with 13 debates in the primary yeah. uh, come together unified behind this ticket. And we always knew that that would happen. Right. We knew as we were watching these debates, which were very spirited yeah. and oftentimes, you know, uh, you know, the candidates had different viewpoints, very starkly different viewpoints on how to get from point A to point B. Uh, but the bottom line is they were all unified in terms of what they wanted to, the direction they want to see our country to go Definitely. to go they were all unified in the fact that they want more accessible health care better education better jobs uh they all you know want to raise wages which is something that is you know very very overdue uh 15 minimum wage just seems like 101 i mean we should have Absolutely. had it years ago 
Um, but they're all unified in that regard. And we knew that they would come together, and they have. And they're so unified behind this ticket. I mean, Senator Bernie Sanders has been out every single weekend for us on the campaign trail. Amazing. You know, going to different, different states. He was just in Pittsburgh yesterday. He's been one of our most effective surrogates. Pete Buttigieg, I mean, not only is he traveling for us, but he's doing a lot of Fox News. And I, <laughs> if anybody, your, your fans should go Google Pete Buttigieg and Fox News, and you'll see some really funny interviews. He's so effective on that network. Um, Elizabeth Warren, I mean, can you think of a better economic validator than Elizabeth Warren to go out to her supporters and say, vote for Joe, and let me tell you why, because he's going to get our economy back on track, and I believe in his economic policies. I mean, it is a wonderful thing to see. Cory Booker still remains the heart and soul yeah. in many regards of our, I think, of, of, of that crew, right? Um, yeah. The moral compass, the one who always kind of brings it back to, to reality, Um it's just wonderful to see all these guys on the campaign trail, um, you know, traversing the country, sometimes together, oftentimes separate. Um, and of course, a lot of these guys have been doing virtual events together, too, um, sure. because we can't necessarily, we're very careful when we travel people. We're very, unlike our opponent, we have very, very strict COVID safety precautions and procedures in place. Um, so we're very careful in terms of how we travel our surrogates. Um, but it's just been a wonderful thing to see. And it's going to be when we win this thing, um, it, it's just going to be an extraordinary bench of Democrats and just Americans, frankly, for yeah. good party affiliations, Americans who are coming together to really bring our country back to a place that we can really be proud of. Yeah, because it's not just Democrats that are voting for Joe in this election. Yeah. People across the aisle come out and endorse him and go out and vote for him. people who have been lifelong Republicans. They see that Joe is the person who's going to bring the country together. Exactly, exactly. It's yeah. not just Democrats. And one of the great things about Joe Biden is he is able, I can't think of, frankly, anybody who could unify this ticket or unify our party more than him in these times. You know, he is, he's been a public servant his entire career, essentially. Yeah. Um, he, uh, you know, just the very act of him going back into the White House. Mm -hmm. On day one, January 21st, or even the afternoon of January 20th, I think it's going to bring us so much more stability yeah. with our foreign allies because he knows them. He knows all the world leaders. So they know that he's going to bring, um, you know, stability back into the administration. He's going to, you know, create a more uh, cohesive environment, working environment with the United States and with our allies. He's not going to stand with dictators like our current president has been doing. And that in itself is going to help stabilize our country and put us in such a better place. Yeah, I'm so glad you mentioned the, the foreign leaders because I'm in the middle of getting my PhD. I'm just about done. And the PhD Congratulations. Is, thank you, thank you. Uh, I'm focusing on the relationship between human rights law and sustainability, especially in a global context. And yeah. the, the kind of relationships that have been pretty much destroyed over the last four years between the United States and a lot of these other countries that, that used to be our allies and used to be there for us. How is Joe Biden going to kind of build back those relationships? Because they're incredibly important. They are incredibly important. And, and, and they truly are. They've been lacking so much in the last four yeah. years. I mean, the damage that has been done. I mean, look, this is not it's not like he's going to go in there on day one. He's going to go in and on day one. And, you know, just that act of being in the White House is going to help us substantially. But there's a lot of work ahead. He's going to have a, a very strong team in place that's going to help rebuild those relationships and get things back on track. But it's going to take some work to get, you know, to get back to a place, you know, given the, all the damage that Trump has created with a lot of our allies, given the fact that he's cozied up to dictators like Kim Jong-un and yeah. Vladimir Putin at the expense of our own allies. Um, yeah. I mean, it's insane. So it's going to take some work. But again, think about this. Joe Biden was the uh, chair of the Senate Foreign Relations Committee for years. He has these relationships when they call him or when he calls, they return his phone call. They listen to him. They take him seriously. They know him. So he doesn't have to go through the act of getting to know some of these foreign leaders. He's going to come in on day one. And just that act alone is going to restore a lot of leadership um, that we desperately need. I want to ask you about one policy related thing because I'm yeah. very passionate about climate and especially fighting for climate justice. And one of my favorite things about the Joe Biden plan for climate is the focus on jobs because there's mm -hmm. so many people out of work right now. 
and to be able to build back better and build back green with a focus on new clean energy jobs and educating the people that are currently out of work right now and making the transition from oil into clean energy. That seems like such a fantastic plan that his ideas are even ahead of many other countries around the world that are still part of the Paris Climate Agreement. So I just wanted to say I really love that part of the plan. Well, you know, I'm so glad you mentioned that because first of all, the, Joe Biden's climate plan, his, his environmental plan is the most progressive for any general election nominee candidate that we've ever had. Definitely. So that's a good step forward, right? And number two, one of the things, you know, we, we've been talking about this in the Democratic Party for a long time, right? But to actually see it put into place is going to be so exciting because the bottom line is we are going to create jobs and we're going to make the economy better at the same or the climate better at the same time. It's yeah. a two way street, but you can also combine the two, right? So yeah. he's been going around from small to small town to small town in America and making the case to a lot of these unemployed, you know, blue collar workers or workers who are employed in jobs that are not of their skill level, right? It's, it's right. one thing to be employed, um, but it's another thing to be doing something that maybe is not up to par with what you were trained to do as a laborer when you were actually working in a job, perhaps at, you know, one of the uh, GM or one of the auto plants. Yeah. Um, maybe now you're working at, you're working retail and you feel like, you know, you should be doing more because you have been trained to do more. So he's going to these towns and communities and saying, we will put you back to work and also improve the climate at the same time through okay. green, green energy jobs. I mean, yeah. 101, right? Yeah. So it's, it's a win-win for, for the economy and it's a win-win for the climate. That's, that's fantastic. I yeah. have a question for you personally. Yeah. Why, why is Joe Biden the candidate that you want to take your time and energy working for every single day? I mean, there's so much at stake in this election. And, and I, you know, again, I worked on Hillary Clinton's campaign, so I've got um, some unfinished business personally to take care of, which is to beat Donald Trump. But look, Joe Biden, I've, I've been working, you know, for better or for worse, I've been working in Washington, D.C. and national politics for about 25 years. And Joe Biden is somebody who I, I've admired from afar. Um, I know him. I don't know him very well, personally, um, but I certainly know him. And I've just always am, admired his integrity, his work ethic, his dedication to his family. You know, every day that he was in the Senate, he would take the Amtrak home to Wilmington, Delaware, to have dinner and be with his family at night. I mean, that is no easy feat, right? He's not going to, you know, late dinners with, with lobbyists. That's never been his thing. Mm -hmm. He's a family guy first, but he also is so incredibly smart, knows how to do the job, and yeah. just has the stability that we desperately need in this country right now. And then I mean, Senator Harris, come on. Like, yeah. she's the best, right? Yeah. So what a dynamic duo these two are. And I cannot wait to call him president-elect, hopefully in nine days, and to call her vice president-elect in nine days. I loved the video of Kamala Harris dancing in the rain with the umbrella. <laughs> I want to see the two of them dance together when they're in the White House. There that would be you great. go. There you go. <laughs> lots of, lots of our, we got we to make sure we get a vaccination yep. so that we can actually be in the same room. Um, but no, it's very exciting. And they're such a great team and a great force. Um, just quite the duo. Um, it's just really... It's really exciting to see, and it's going to be great to call them um, president and president or vice president-elect. Yeah. So for everyone who's watching now, where do they go to find out more information in case they're not registered, in case they haven't gotten their ballot yet? Where is the place that they can go to learn everything they need to? I'm so glad you asked me that, Adam, because it's so easy. Iwillvote.com. www.iwillvote.name. Type in your address. It tells you, the website will tell you if, you if you want to vote absentee, if you still have time to do it. If so, where to drop your ballots and where to request your ballot. Um, if you want to vote early, which is what I plan to do tomorrow or Tuesday here in Washington, D.C. when early vote starts, where I need to go. In fact, I just checked it out this morning. I was like, okay, if I can go in between meetings tomorrow morning mm -hmm. um, or Tuesday, where do I go? Well, it turns out I can walk four blocks away from where I currently am. To my early voting location, I found this out on IWillVote.com. So I encourage everyone on here to go there, make a plan, and uh, vote for this guy. Yes, and I have my voting plan with my brothers. We're going to be waiting outside Madison Square Garden, socially distant, on the line until we get inside, and we'll be voting this Friday. 
So if anyone wants to come see us online, we'll be voting at Madison Square Garden this Friday. Ooh, for all of you fans out there, you can uh, yeah. go see these guys in line at a yeah. social distance, obviously. Definitely, definitely. Yeah. yeah. Well, I so appreciate your time thank and, and you. answering you all too. of these questions. Thank you so much. And thank you for your commitment to this t campaign and this ticket. And appreciate everything you're doing doing for us it's great of course thank you thank you and hopefully thank we will you, speak Adam. soon on the other side of a biden harris win perfect sounds great nine All days right. bye okay bye